when do I start my workday? When am I taking uh, my last meeting? When am I actually going to stop actually looking at messages? Um, you know, what times are family only? There's no computer at all. That are, where do I actually have my computer? Uh, you know, uh, uh, what are my limits for different apps? What's my limit for Facebook? What's my limit for Instagram? What's my limit for TikTok? What's my limit for, you know, being on Google Chrome, right? Uh, all those things. Uh, who has access to me? Who doesn't have access to me, et cetera, et cetera. So those are a lot of things that I had to decide, okay, I'm going to put this into play. You know what happens? What happens is as you put these new limits into play, you actually force yourself to become better. Hey, what's up? And welcome back to the Cash PT Lunch Hour podcast. Today, uh, my special guest is Greg Todd. And today, we're doing something we haven't done in a long time, is recording this while we're going live on the internet. Uh, first 40-something episodes of the Cash PT Lunch Hour were um, originally uh, recorded live. Uh, the last 100 episodes have been recorded via Zoom. And today, because Greg's so awesome and special, we decided to do a live recording. And uh, if you don't know Greg Todd, Greg Todd is um, one of my closest friends. He is someone who every time I talk to him, I ex feel like I'm extracting more value than uh, I'm giving, even though all I'm trying to do is, is help the man. Uh, he clearly doesn't need always my help, but he, I know from having a conversation with him, just recording his podcast, he gets a lot out of this too. And that's why Greg and I, um, I don't know, we're success partners, we're friends. We, you know... Like I got it, we got each other's backs. And I found out last year, it was about a year ago, Greg, when you called me and messaged me and I knew, okay, Greg, Greg's doing this for me. Like I know he's always got my back. So I wanted to bring Greg on the show today um, to talk about what's going on, what he's doing, what he's been doing differently last year and what he's doing differently going forward. Because I know from listening to Greg's show and he's doing different things now than he was over a year ago or even two years ago. So Greg, um, I appreciate you. I don't know. I don't have all the words to tell you how much I appreciate you. So um, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. I know you do. And I appreciate you as well. Uh, you know, you know, as I said to you earlier today, uh, you're about as loyal as they come. And, and, uh, and, and I just, yeah, I just appreciate you. I appreciate your family. Um, you're a good dude, Aaron LeBauer. You're a good dude. So Thanks. Well, dude, you've you've impacted me in in so many ways. Like I could never repay you, you know, for it. So I appreciate it. Um, you know, like I don't want any money <laughs> anyway. So I'm good. <laughs> I know, but even just like so, reaching out to me what five something years ago. You know, I was trying to get some help getting a a talk at uh, approved at PPS, and you just reached out to me and was like, "Here, let me help you out. I got this done." And you know, your help and Jerry Durham's help and. Even the person who was on the prior year's uh, board of approvals or whatever didn't help, and they haven't accepted the last five things that I've offered them. So, yeah, it has you nothing know, look, to do. I think at the end of the day, you know this as a daddy of two girls, right? Yeah. Um, it's just so fun to give, man. You know, it's so fun to give. It's so fun to help people out and and just see people get their problems solved. Yeah. You know and. And, you know, that's I mean, that's the main thing. I, I just I just love I love to help people. But I I do believe this. I believe that you have to help people in a way that you're not going to be like, oh, man, this sucks. You know, like you got to help people on your terms, uh, but you got to help people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, isn't and that what really, it's all about? Yeah, that's what it's all about. You know, uh, you, you have to be willing to help people. You got to be able to um, help as many people as possible. You have to be able to help people with the biggest problems you can solve for them, but you have to do it on your terms. You have to do it in a way that honors you, that honors your family, that honors whatever things are important, you know, to you. So yeah. that's it. And that's, well, that's what you did this year, right? You kind of like, uh, was it pulled a Dave Chappelle and said, peace out? I pulled Dave Chappelle. Yeah, I did. I did. Yeah. I did. I did. Yeah. I did. yeah. What, what was going on? Like what happened? Like what? Like what, what triggered it and like what, and then I guess the second question is what allowed you to do that? Um, well, what triggered it? You know, I think the, the, the big thing is this, 
I think as entrepreneurs and for those people that are in the group, um, for those of you that are live, you know, uh, or replay, you can let us know. But for, um, you know, I think as entrepreneurs, we have this desire and this and this um, this goal to help so many people. And we actually have an addiction to seeing people get results, whether it's in the clinic, seeing a patient, you know, walk well or raise their arm or not have pain in their back or whatever the case may be. Right. Or for me, as you know, an entrepreneur of multiple companies, just see people get results from the services that that my company you know provides. And I'm addicted to that as well. And when I decided to move my services of consulting online, uh, I, I didn't truly realize the power of, uh, you know, doing consistent uh, behaviors and what that would actually create. Uh, in five years, I went from helping my first person online uh, to having over 2,500 clients online. Um, and, and, and not only that, but it also created uh, two additional businesses to the already existing businesses that I had. So now I had three businesses. Between all my businesses, we're serving anywhere between five to 10,000 people a month um, and the way that I had done things, uh, was very intimate with people, meaning that like, I like to meet with people, this, that, da, 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 da. And, and, uh, and it's one thing to do it for 10 people or 20 people or 30 people. But when you're doing this for, you know, you're getting hundreds of messages and, you know, thousands of, of emails on a weekly basis or monthly basis or whatnot, um, it got to the point where it was just too much to be able to handle. And I knew that the way that I was doing it wasn't serving um, my family anymore. And um, and I knew that I needed to do a reset. I just needed to do a reset on how I was serving people uh, in a way that everyone in my household was happy with. So I decided to take off three and a half months. And I did this prior to I made this decision before COVID. I just knew that I had a coaching program. I had to fulfill out the coaching program until the end of May. And then after that, I was going to take off that time. So I decided that in February. Um, and, uh, and then COVID happened and it just confirmed my decision even more. Uh, but then I took off time. And during that time, my family was able to talk to me, was able to uh, address concerns they had with me, uh, was able to let me know that we're so th they're thankful for everything that I've done for them, but um, they know the position that I'm in right now financially and uh, and all that other stuff. And they just said they wanted more of me and they didn't want to feel like they were having to split me between, you know, gajillions of students and clients and therapists and this and that, and da, 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 da. So, uh, you know, it was the first time in my entrepreneurial career where I was like, wow, I, I actually have the choice to walk away, but I knew that I didn't want to walk away. So I knew that I had to do things different and I just decided to come back in a different way. And that's really what happened. You Dude, know, that's what happened. You, that's you, awesome. know, you know what's so funny? You, you know what's so funny real quick? Yeah. Is that is that, you know, as entrepreneurs, we say that we want to build these amazing businesses and we want to do it for our families and this and that, whatever. And then and, and then we go through the process of building it, right? And then somehow, some way throughout that time, we start to lose. Mm -hmm our purpose of the thing that we were actually doing and the reason why we were, you know, building it. So I just had to kind of take a step back and say, Hey, how do I do this? And, you know, and, and how do I do this where it serves them? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of those things. I think it's, it's, I do it for my family and then that becomes the excuse to keep working longer and harder some days. And, right. you know, we had the similar things like this year. It's like, I got to spend more time with my kids in 2020 and I have in a long time and, and work on my relationships. Um, and it's still, it's, I mean, it's still one of those things that's a constant struggle. Like how do I give what I need to give and want to give to my business so that I can then have the time to give to my family? What, what are some of the ways that you've figured out uh, how to do that? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the biggest thing is you have to have uh, really, really, really strong boundaries in play, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, we, we talked about this um, er, er, earlier this morning, but I think one of the things that as, um, as just healthcare professionals, which I'm assuming is mostly what's in the group, uh, is that we've been trained that our value to people increases the more time that we spend with those people, right? right? So 
like you know you build more cpt codes if you're in the insurance game and you have more value right you spend more time with your client if you're in the cash game and that justifies you to you know charge them more right so everything has been always based off of time well for me i realized that like having five businesses and and doing it the way that i was doing it uh was was ridding me of my time and time to spend with my family so the first thing that i did is I created um, massive boundaries, right? For instance, when do I start my workday? When am I taking uh, my last meeting? When am I actually going to stop actually looking at messages? Um, you know, what times are family only? There's no computer at all. That are, where do I actually have my computer? Uh, you know, uh, uh, what are my limits for different apps? What's my limit for Facebook? What's my limit for Instagram? What's my limit for TikTok? What's my limit for, you know, being on Google Chrome, right? Uh, all those things, uh, who has access to me, who doesn't have access to me, et cetera, et cetera. So those are a lot of things that I had to decide, okay, I'm going to put this into play. And you know what happens? What happens is as you put these new limits into play, you actually force yourself to become better. Mm -hmm. Like you force yourself to become better. You know, it's kind of like this. I don't know how much football you watch, but isn't it amazing how you'll watch a game and you'll have a team that's struggling in the first quarter to get down the field, right? They're struggling to, you know, it might take them eight minutes to get down the field and then they kick a field goal, right? But when there's only one minute left in the half, they go into a new type of offense. It's called a hurry up offense. <laughs> And when they're in hurry up offense, a lot of times they get the same results that it took them when they were methodically going down the field. Well, what I've just figured out is that I figured out that, you know what? I need to operate my businesses in a hurry up offense mode. Meaning that what's the least amount of time that I can still get the same or even better results. And I've been able to do that, not get rid of any businesses, and basically get myself to the point where I'm working eight to 10 hours a week. Yeah, that's awesome. Have you, like as part of that, have you, <clears throat> you've been doing this for a long time is delegating responsibilities to other people. But have you seen like at a certain point in time, it was, okay, it's okay for me to give up how it's done as long as it gets done versus the way I would do it, right? Which is what a micromanager yeah. would do. It's like, I'll just, yeah. it's better for me to do it and I'll just do it, right? Is is that part of what's happened in the last year? Or is that something that happened years ago? And it's just been, I been mean, a default I mean, I would part. Say, you know, I would say that that's something that uh, like I came to terms with probably four or five years ago yeah. that uh, if I can teach someone to do it at 80 to 90% of the level that I'm doing it at, then yeah. I'm okay with that. And honestly, that's the only way I was able to even grow to having multiple businesses and not drive myself you know, crazy. Um, what I have had to become more comfortable with is, uh, you know, how much am I investing in all the top level people uh, in whatever businesses that I have? I felt this need that, you know, I had to constantly um, always be around those people, especially the top people, whether it's, you know, coaches I have in my coaching program or it's people that I have at my clinics um, or, you know, for my virtual staffing agency, the CEO, blah, 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 blah. Like how much do I need to actually invest in those people? And, and I still never got rid of that more is better or, um, you know, the more intimate you mm -hmm. can do it where you can see them in person or whatever is always better. Um, the reality is, is that, you know, if I know that I can only, like, I only have an hour for this person a month or I only have, um, two hours for the, this person a quarter, knowing that I just make the most out of it. I think we have so many distractions around us. We have so many things that are going on that, um, that we, 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 we tend not to make the best use of our time, yeah. you know, when we're with those people. So that's what I'm doing different now. Uh, it's less time, but the time that I am spending with people, it's just very impactful. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. So over your three month, uh, um, gap year, <laughs> what do we call it like the dave chappelle month the dave chappelle quarter or the like your time just with your family like yeah 
what were you able to do different? Is it just more time with them or was it, you know, more experiences? I mean, you know, like what were some of the things that you guys were able to do that you weren't doing before? Uh, I, th I think the biggest thing is not just more time with them, but more time for myself. Yeah. You know, here, I'll tell you this. One of the biggest things is that, you know, we, we, we always put ourselves last, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I'll take care of my wife. I'll take care of my four kids. Uh, but there was very little time for me. And, and any time that I actually had time for myself, what I was doing prior is that I was like, okay, let's say if I'm going to go to breakfast, all right, let me see if there's a student locally, they can meet me because I know they have to ask me questions or whatever. Okay. All right. Okay. If I'm going to go to, you know, like go on a fishing trip here. All right. Let me see if some of my students want to go with me. If I was going to go out on my boat. Oh, okay. Let me see if somebody wants to go. With me. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if my business partner wants to go. And, and basically I, I had very little time for myself. So what was happening is that whenever I'm in CEO mode or mentor mode, like there's a certain amount of energy that I have to bring to that place, that event. And the things that were supposed to be my personal time, I ended up feeling even more drained from it. It's not that I don't love the thing. I love the things that I do, but what I did over that three, four month, you know, break that sabbatical is I spent a lot of time with just myself. And what I uh, was able to do is I was able to create hobbies for myself and things that I can do, you know, that I just love to do by myself. Here's what I think that did for me. What I did for me is it helped me create identities outside of entrepreneurship. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people uh, have their main identity in entrepreneurship, which is a reason why it makes it so hard for them to ever change and adapt because if they change and people don't like it, well, then they lose part of their identity. And that's a problem because we live in a world now in 2021 where like, if you're not changing, uh, it's kind of, here, you know what? I watched this episode of Cobra Kai, right? Okay. Which is basically literally the best show right now on, on, on Netflix. Okay. And, 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 and uh, the Cobra Kai uh, members were actually put into this cement truck and there was cement in it and they had to like crawl the wall, crawl the wall, crawl the wall. Because if they stopped moving, the cement would actually keep them stuck. Well, as an entrepreneur in 2021, things are constantly changing so much with restrictions, this, that, COVID, vaccine, that, that, that unrest, all, all these different things. If you're not constantly changing, you're going to get taken out of the game. So the problem is, is that are you comfortable with changing? Most people aren't, Aaron. Yeah. They're not comfortable with changing because if they change the way that they do something, whether that's going from seeing uh, patients from an hour to 50 minutes, well, that changes their identity. Okay, I'm going to bring in someone to see some of the patients that I have. Well, ooh, that's going to change my identity because I get my worth from seeing patients only. If you stay in these things, you will then eventually get stuck. Yeah. Change, change. People hate change because change is People hard. It. It's they uncomfortable. It. So we <laughs> have to ask ourselves, why do we hate it so much? Because it's uh, right. It's not easy. It's not normal. It's not default. It's not. What's the consequences of it? I, I, I think one yeah. of the big things is the, the consequences of change is that it alters our identity. Yeah. I might lose. You have to, in order to grow, you have to kill something off. You, you usually do. Yeah. But, it, but here, it's kind of like this. Why do people stay in toxic relationships? Why? I don't know. No, I, no, I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell yeah. you, people stay in the relationship because that person that's in the relationship with them is part of their identity. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. It's their whole identity. The same thing, like people in chronic pain have a hard time doing the things to get out because it's, it's a part of their identity that enables their relationships with the people around them, the way that they right. built it over 10, 20 years. Right. If I know that there's someone that's that like, like they know me as being this person that needs help, that's in pain, that needs, you know, comforting God is da, 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 da. What if I empower myself? Well, that relationship with that person might change. My identity might change and how that person views me. Mm -hmm. This is the same reason why people that are working for, you know, a, a traditional nine to five job, even though they know they don't want to do it, they, they, they can't make the move because it might change their identity. I know when I started, 
in 2004-5, I know that I got a lot of flack for trying to start my own physical therapy practice because like I didn't, Greg, you didn't go to school to be a business person. You went to school to be a physical therapist. Right. So what are we going to tell people now? Right. And then, and then in 2010, when I was like, okay, I want to now be a consultant. No, 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 no. You have these practices. You're known as a physical therapy clinic director for your clinics that you own. You're going to be this consultant. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's going to change your identity. We're not comfortable with that. And then when I decided to move uh, to consulting and helping people online, wait, wait, no, 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 wait, 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 we can't do that because you do this type of consulting that I was like, well, that doesn't serve me anymore because I don't want to travel every single weekend. Right. And then me now being this mentor, this SS, you know, smart success healthcare guy, da, 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 da. Okay. I'm going to now help people with more, you know, helping them manage their business and manage right. their time and da, da. wait, 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 that's going to change your identity. What will people think? That's why people are so damn stuck mm -hmm. because they have every single thing that they do is tied up into their business or into their calling or into, uh, you know, their job. And changing the way that they do things will actually alter that identity and it makes them too damn uncomfortable to change. Yeah, no, 100%. So what was the new piece of your identity that you got to feed? Was it fishing, for me, something it else? Really just under yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, for me, it's just understanding that, um, you know, time is uh, my most valuable asset. Uh, I can't buy any more of it. I can't, um, I can't, uh, invest it. I, I, mm -hmm. I mean, really, look, it, like I can only use the time. Mm -hmm. And I know that like for me on my wall, I have 168. Every single week I put on the whiteboard 168. I've got 168 hours. Let's see how we're going to use this this week. Okay. Yeah. And so for me, I know that I need to block my time up into basically three major categories. Um, I have to have time for myself. I have to have time to be able to work on moving my businesses forward. Um, and I know that I also have to um, have time to be able to mess around. Yeah. I just have managed uh, those three areas a heck of a lot better than what I used to. Yesterday I did this uh, with a few people that I coach. I told them, hey, do me a favor, go into this um, area of your iPhone under the settings and go to screen time. And I want you to go into apps. And, you know, this is called the messing around time. Your time on Facebook, your time on Instagram, your time, you know, on uh, TikTok. You know, how much time are we spending? The average American right now is spending three hours and five minutes a day. So I'm, I'm not judging anybody. Yeah. I'm just saying that, you know, if you are saying that I'm overwhelmed, I don't have time, I don't have this, I don't have that, da, 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 I'm just asking for you to manage it. For me, I manage that time to where... I only have a certain amount of time that I'm allowed to spend on particular apps. What that does is now that puts me in a two minute drill. Mm -hmm. That means that, okay, for the limited time that I have on YouTube, that I have on Facebook, that I have on Instagram, I have to decide, am I going to consume or am I going to contribute? Do I wanna consume? Sure, but I need to contribute more than consume. And every single day that I contribute more than I consume during that limited amount of time that I have, I put a W in that column. Every single day that I consume more than I contribute on that platform, I put an L. So what it's allowed me to do is allow me to become 10 times more efficient um, on every single platform that is used for good, but can also be used for bad. Yeah. And that's the first thing. That's my messing around time. My second thing is my me time. I understand that I need energy because I know that if I can manage my energy and I could bring great energy, I'm going to be much better with um, sales. I'm going to be much better with helping people. I'm going to be much better with getting people to act. I'm going to be much better with leading people. So I need to do things every single day that's going to elevate my energy. That's eating right. That is nutrition. Um, that is exercise. That is addressing all the things that might have pissed me off the day before. You know, like a like a bad email, Aaron. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> right? Okay. Got one all on Sunday. <laughs> yeah. You know, all the things that could, and I just have to, like, I just have to settle it, like, yeah. like right then and there. Right? What do you do? I like, how do you, like, 
how do you change your state like right away? Is there is there something that you do? You're like, man, I'm feeling like shit or I just got this thing. Is there something that Greg Todd does that you can change your state from like, if I can run down <clears throat> feeling like, oh man, there's not, you know, because we all have those moments where like, there's nothing I can do that's going to change this to like, boom, Greg, back in, like I've got a meeting in 30 seconds for a minute or I got to be with my family. Here's how I get like get ready for that or get pumped for that i mean yeah so the first thing is that every single morning um i actually start the day um with gratitude every mm -hmm. day i start with gratitude so usually I, i'm already um moving in a positive direction by just looking in the mirror while i'm getting into my workout clothes saying okay these are three things that i am grateful for today Okay. So to me, you got to like, I can't wait for the environment to make me feel good. Mm -hmm. I actually have to tell the environment I'm more in control of my situation than you are of me. Okay. That's so powerful. that's one thing that I know that I can do. Okay. The next thing is after I do my workout and I'm doing, it's honestly about three minutes of reflection. I'm just thinking of anything that has, that I'm still stewing over from the day before, if there's anything at all, if there is then I am just trying to make sense out of it. What can I learn from that? Mm -hmm. I lost an employee. What can I learn from that? Dude, can I pull, let me, can I stop you real quick? Yeah. You just said when something difficult happens, you reflect and go, what can I learn from it? What do you think, what, like, what do most people do? They go, oh man, yeah. like this doesn't work. Like I'm a failure, like whatever I tried, but you just said, what can I learn from it? So can you just yeah. so, explain so why I that's think, important? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things is that uh, most people uh, have their first word as why instead of how. Hmm. Most people think life is happening to them because it actually is. Uh, and they don't look at life actually happening for them. So that's a total reframing that, that I believe you really have to do that will benefit you. If every single thing that you see going on right now, you see unrest, you see COVID, you see this, you see that, you see capital, that, that storm of the capital, all these different things. And if your first word is why, why is this happening? That, that means that you're saying that these things around you are happening to you. I have just reframed it to say, okay, these things right now, how are they happening for me? So instead of saying why, I say, how is this happening for me? Like, how, like, what is the lesson that I can learn from what just happened yesterday? How can I take the events of yesterday and actually use that to be able to benefit people, help people solve their problems? It's two totally different things. In the first one, the why, you are a victim. And you really don't have any control. And when you don't have any control, that's what builds up, you know, like worry. That's what builds up anxiety. What does anxiety do? Anxiety actually makes us stop. It makes us freeze. Now, if, conversely, if I'm like, okay, that happened, it, it might be perceived as bad, but I'm actually going to figure out, hey, well, how is that gonna work for good? What's the lesson that I can learn from that? Well, now um, I'm in power. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So if you're constantly looking at situations like that, then then uh, then everything is good. It's just a matter of time before you figure out if it's good. I just don't want here. Here, listen, for those of you that are listening right now, I want you to think of a girlfriend or a boyfriend back in high school that you broke up with. And I want you to think if you can go back to that time, the, the day of or the day after you probably playing. You know, some, I will remember you. And just crying. And <laughs> I can't believe that, that JJ broke up with me. Ah! And you're going crazy, right? Okay. But now, 15, 20, 25 years later, you you probably like, yo, that's the best thing that ever happened to me. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is that a lot of times, Aaron, it takes people 5, 10, 15 years to be able to finally move on from that. I just have made the decision to be able to say nothing is going to last more than 24 to 48 hours before I actually address it. Say, hey, this is how it's working for me. Let's move on. Done. Yeah, yeah. I guess I think in that the the crux of a lot of problems as 
we don't address things head on. We're not honest with ourselves and we're not honest with the people around us about how we feel about something. And then it stews and then we're like, oh, I can't, I can't uh, do X, Y, and Z. Uh, I have no control over this, but actually we do. We just never actually spoke up. Right. Right. right? I mean, it's, that's, it. that's nuts. I, th- I mean, I think that to me that drives a lot of, um, a lot of behaviors and a lot of problems. And I will tell you this. Me focusing on myself and my family, my relationship this year brought me a lot of clarity around those areas in my life. Yeah, it really does. You know, uh, it, it's 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 just so important that we uh, have awareness, an awareness of things that are truly bothering us, um, that are that are are messing with our head, um, that we just aren't addressing. Because whether you address it or not, um, especially if you don't address it, uh, it keeps you stuck. And, 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 and it's not just about entrepreneurship, but it, it keeps you stuck in so many different areas of your life, you know, uh, and, and, and you've got to address it. So, so going back to your original question, that's what I do. Um, I set my intentions in the day, uh, in the beginning of the day, by just being in a state of gratitude. I, I've realized that I can't. I don't feel the emotions of worry and anxiety and be grateful at the same time. It's never happened for me. So it's either I'm, I'm grateful uh, or I'm, I'm in a state of worry and panic, you know, and for me, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a man of faith and, and that's how I set my intentions for, you know, for the day. But it doesn't mean that things don't bother me. Yeah. I just address them and I, I'm able to, you know, move on in 24 to 48 hours instead of it taking 24 to 48 months. Yeah, dude, that's amazing. What um, what are some of the ways that uh, you found this um, practice of gratitude or you know journaling? You know, like how has that impacted your your life and your business in the last few years since you've been doing it? Well, I've been doing gratitude for for you know the last I don't know maybe seven years, uh, and I think that most people know me for for my energy, uh, uh, and it's just because I'm I'm just I'm just always, I'm pretty much always in a grateful state, man. You know, even with everything that happened last year, just constantly in a, a state of gratitude. What what I what I can say that I haven't always done is to let things go um, fast mm-hmm. and to be able to process it. it. It's it's one thing to say, just let it go, man. No, 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 no. We have to process it first, right? Like like we have to pro- like what happened and and what can I take from that. I think that's something that a lot of people don't do. I know that when you don't do that, um, you tend to waste energy and you waste time on thinking about it, on festering about it. What if, what if, what this, what that. And uh, and I know that that's actually, that's actually t- taken a lot of people out this past year, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so so how has it affected my business? Uh, it, it's, it's allowed me to move. You know, at the end of the day, you guys, if you're struggling in business, I can tell you right now, the main reason why you are and you're not getting the results that you want to get is you have no momentum. And momentum in business comes from uh, positive actions. If you're doing, listen, let me tell you something. If you are showing up, let's just say you're you're doing, whether it's a podcast or or you're, you're doing live videos or you're doing constant blog, eventually, if you do this thing consistently enough, and you're talking to your audience and you're resonating with them. Number one, you're going to get better just because you're doing it more. Okay. Number two is that people are going to just see that consistent behavior in you and they're going to trust you by default, even if you suck. Yeah. That creates momentum. That creates momentum. And that is the number one key to business. It's just momentum. Right. Like Aaron will tell you the same efforts that he put out in his business, the same energy that he put out 10 years ago did not reap the same benefits that he's getting today. Why? Because he has momentum. He has momentum that he didn't have 10 years ago. So when you're able to uh, to deal with the things that are are potentially holding you back and you're able to move forward and 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 move forward in a in, in, um, in a good direction in a positive direction you're going to create momentum 
And that is what creates amazing results in business. You can also move forward and not address those things, but it will take away lots of energy and eventually you'll conk out. Yeah, dude, that's important. That's a great point. Um, I want to kind of shift a little bit to uh, what are you doing? Like, how are you doing it? And I know you so see gratitude, time blocking. You've created the GT planner, yep. right? And I remember when you announced it, I was like, dude, I got to have one of the first ones. I don't know if this is number one, but I don't think it is. But I got my <laughs> GT planner and it's dope. It's big. It's awesome. And I've been yeah. journaling in the last few years and using different planners. Um, how do you use a planner and how did you come up with creating, like what was it you needed to, uh, that wasn't in the ones that you were using that uh, yeah. you've decided to put in the one that you you created? Yeah, I mean, time has always been a huge thing you know, for me. And in my coaching programs, um, I've always given people planners. Mm -hmm. The one that I was giving people prior to me creating my own was, um, was from Brandon Burchard. It's called mm -hmm. a High Performance Planner, right? And like that's that was one that I used, but it it didn't it it wasn't me. Like there was there was some good stuff in it, but there was like I felt like every single day it was like a I was like taking a damn like the SAT. It was like a, it was it was like a, what I don't know, you know. And so I just looked at like what have I done for myself? What is my routine? What mm -hmm. have I done to get to the point to where I'm at um, in my life and in my career, right? And by the way, I actually created the GT planner before I started the process of creating it before I even took off the sabbatical. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So the truth of the matter is, is that how I set my day every single day is, um, is doing something to edify my body, uh, making sure that I am dealing with the things that are bothering me and troubling me with regards to reflecting and rebuilding myself, understanding that for the first 20 three, 24 years of my life, I've been trained to be able to be a worker bee and I've been trained to be able to work for somebody else. And I need to learn the ways of the new economy, especially the economy that just totally shifted in 2020. So I have an area for rebuilding my mind. Okay. Uh, and then I have an area for saying a message to myself on what I need to focus my energy on. I understand this. It's not about doing more. It's just about doing the most important things. Mm -hmm. And then if I'm going to be spending any time working on my business, um, I have in the actual planner uh, for every single day, different things that we are going to work on in that day. And I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. it's got four different um, time blocks or time codes for what you're working on in your day. And that is the value ladder. That's the four levels of value. So if you don't mind, I'll go over it real quick. Yeah, and just go for it, please. Okay. So earlier, Aaron and I were talking about his journey uh, being a solopreneur to, you know, um, uh, a serial entrepreneur, right? And if we look at what Aaron was doing when he started his, his cash, you know, PT practice 11 years ago, uh, he was treating patients. He was doing what we call implementation, which is the first level of value. Uh, that's for anyone that is doing the actual thing, a waiter, a waitress, people that clean your house, painters. Right now, there's an electrician at my house putting in a new breaker. Okay, Those people are actually doing the thing. If you're a licensed physical therapist, you're a licensed occupational therapist, you're doing the thing when you are treating patients. By the way, every single one of those people, their job is extremely important. It's just in the marketplace, it's the lowest level of value when it comes to compensation. So whether you're working at In-N-Out Burger, making 10 bucks an hour, or you're working as a cardiologist um, that pays maybe, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 bucks an hour, like it's still the lowest level of value. It's implementation. I have an area of when I'm actually doing implementation activities. If I'm working on, you know, building out, you know, something online or I'm responding to somebody, this and that, that that's implementation. Okay. Conversely, when I am meeting with my team, I am doing meetings. I am helping to instruct people that are around me. That's called unification. Like I remember when I had my first job as a physical therapist back in 2001, after my first year, uh, I got 
a 1.5% increase in pay. And I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting a 4% increase in pay. I said to my boss, how can I have gotten a 4% increase in pay? I said, did I not do a good enough job as a PT? She goes, no, you did a great job. But in order for you to get paid more, you need to be a clinic director. See, what she didn't tell me at that time is that unifiers, which are the people that oversee the implementers, get paid at a higher level. So the person that manages an In-N-Out Burger makes more than most physical therapists that work as just a PT. It's because it's at a higher level of value. It's not that the job is more important or it's more honorable. It's just the value that it is in the marketplace. Yeah. So I have an area for whenever I do my meetings, anything that I'm doing that's unifying my team. Okay, And I have a certain time for that. The two higher levels of value uh, are communication and visionary. So Aaron, today, you would say that most of your time that you're spending is on those levels, which is the reason why you make a lot more money than you did when you started 11 years ago. Right. Communication is what we're doing right now. That's when you're speaking to the masses. If you're doing an Instagram story, you're doing a Facebook Live, you're um, writing copy for emails to your patients or to your audience, um, uh, you are uh, speaking on stage, you're writing a book, those are all communication. That's speaking to the masses. Kevin Hart, great communicator. Dave Chappelle, great communicator. George Clooney, great communicator. Will Smith, great communicator. Okay, those are people that are able to communicate so well in their craft that they're able to evoke emotion out of many people. That's called communication. And then the highest level is visionary. That's when you're actually working on your business instead of in the business. Making one move, making one decision on your business is a difference between you making $25,000 more a month, you making $5,000 more a month, Making one move is the reason why I went from 1 million to 4 million in a business. If you think about the people that we respect the most when it comes to entrepreneurship, let's think about like, like Tesla. Who, who comes to mind, Aaron? Yeah, Elon Musk or you mean okay. Tesla, when the guy we, that invented the, uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, the, the SpaceX and all yeah, that other stuff yeah. and rockets and this and that. Okay, Elon. So, so, so how about Apple? Yeah, um, that's Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. And the funny thing is that you never say, and it's not just you, no one ever says Steve Wozniak, who's mm -hmm. the person that actually built the first Apple computer. Right. We always say the person that is the visionary behind it. Mm -hmm. Now, the people that are able to make the most impact are not just visionaries, because there's a visionary for Ford, there's a visionary for GM, there's a visionary for Chrysler, but the richest man in the world right now is Elon Musk, because he's not only a visionary, but he's also a great communicator. He communicates to his audience. He communicates to his audience on Twitter. He communicates to his audience by doing multiple interviews on YouTube. Because of that, his audience feels connected with him. Because of that, his audience is actually selling his cars for him. <laughs> He's got a, like he a three-year wait list or something, right? They got a heat, they... You guys, he's never done one marketing ad for Tesla. <laughs> People are selling his Teslas for him. Yeah. Because he's a visionary and he's a communicator. So with that said, we're like, well, I'm never going to be an Elon Musk. Okay, me neither. But the deal is, is that because today, if I'm going to work anywhere between eight to 10 hours a week, I just spend 70 to 80% of my time doing visionary and communication work. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I'm able to work a quarter to a tenth of the time that I used to work and make 10 times more than I used to make. I think one of the big things I want to pull out of there, Greg, is that part of the communication work is communicating and delegating your vision to your team so they can implement it. Right. Right. So, so let's start from the top. You have to be able to have the vision for what you're trying to do and then be able to communicate it, which is the next level down, to your team, which is the unification, so that they can implement it and they can basically fulfill out the mission that you all have collectively made together. Right. I love that. Dude, that's nuts. That's awesome. So um, someone wants to, like, we got to wrap up. I mean, but I want to make sure that People know where to get the GT planner. So what's the best way to get your hands on one of these like awesome yeah, um, feeling planners that's yeah, gonna yeah, help yeah. me 
you know, Focus you know, on it's, my vision. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it, it's, it's a great feeling planner and it feels awesome. And the packaging is great, but it's much better inside when you actually start using it. Right. Um, so you can get it at the gtplanner.com. So what I have done and I'll tell, I'll tell your audience this, Aaron. So, uh, I had these planners and started the process of creating them last in October of 2019. I had just done a really big event for uh, about a hundred of my coaching clients. I just ordered a, over a hundred of Brandon Bouchard's planners. And I'm like, damn, man, I don't even like this damn planner. So I decided after that day, instead of, you know, making my environment do things for me, I said, I'm just going to create my own. So I started from that process of, you know, building this thing out. Right. And, um, and then uh, we ordered our first wave of them uh, and, uh, and we sold out, but we also thought that we were going to have this massive event that I usually have called SSPT live. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I had an order in a queue for another, um, 5,000 of the planners. And then the event got canceled and they said, do you want to cancel the order? And I was like, no, so I, was like, I was like, I still want them. So, um, what I decided to do is that I don't know when I'm going to have my event, if it's going to be June or you know, whatever. I don't know if it's going to be virtual, this and that. We decided let's go ahead and get these bad boys out to people. So we actually are giving the planners out um, for free, just shipping. Oh, so, wow. um, Aaron, you might have a link for it. If you have a, a unique link, you can give it to the people here. Um, uh, if not, they can go to the gtplanner.com. They can pick up as many planners as they want until we finish those um those 5,000. That's awesome. I think we're halfway done with them already. Yeah. So um, go pick them up and you can get your hands on one. And look, if you're not willing, anything in life that's important, you'll measure it. Yeah. Right. If Absolutely. you want to lose weight, get on a scale. You know, if you care about, you know, being able to feed your family, you kind of check your bank account every once in a while. It's crazy that time is the most valuable asset, but we actually do nothing to measure it and to manage it. Right. Amen. Yeah, I mean, well, I just bought a couple dozen of these for my Platinum Mastermind event uh, to ship out to them in the next month. So, um, dude, this is awesome. And the fact that you guys are doing, what, giving them away on your website? Yeah. 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 You guys got to you know, go check it out. It's the gtplanner.com. We'll put a link below um, if you're, like, listening and you're driving. Um, just come back and we'll put it in the show notes. Awesome. Yeah, man. Dude, this is great. I'm stoked. And I think this is awesome. And you know what, Greg? Like I always, uh, I always enjoy chatting with you and I always feel like we can talk like forever. Uh, this is the end of about two hours of us talking. So yeah. I know you're probably getting <laughs> tired of it too. Um, but if someone wants to learn more about you or connect with you, what's the best place for them to do that? Yeah, I'm pretty much everywhere at Greg Todd PT, uh, whether it's on, uh, Instagram, uh, uh, YouTube, Greg Todd PT as well. Um, my website is gregtodtv.com and you know, I'm just all over, you know, I'm all over, yeah. I'm awesome. all over, but I'm not always working. You know right. I mean? That's it. <laughs> well, if people say to me, Aaron, how do you, like, you're everywhere. I'm like, I know I got it. I mean, I have a team of people doing this. So one of the greatest, one of the greatest, and I know you've gotten this compliment before. One of the greatest compliments somebody can give you is they say, wow, you're omnipresent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to be it. Yeah. I just don't want to be everywhere. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Greg, um, before we head off, uh, just is there anything else that we didn't cover or any other like um, insight you think people listening uh, need to know or need to think about? You know, I'll, I'll, I'll just say this, and this has nothing to do with the things that we talked about. But, you know, we live in a time uh, that is just one of the most interesting, crazy and if you allow it, defeating times that I've ever experienced, if you allow it, though, you know, I think uh, this is a time that we're currently in that you really have to guard your mind. Like you really have to guard your mind. Uh, the things that are constantly around us, whether it's media, it's social media, it's the news, it's this, that, you know, if you allow that to infiltrate your mind. I'm going to tell you right now, it will really affect your actions. Please guard your mind. Please guard your mind and protect your mind and make sure that you are being indoctrinated with things that are actually going to serve you 
and not limit you. That's what I would tell you for 2021. Dude, beautiful. Greg, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate you so much. Um, this has been awesome, insightful for me. This is some stuff we haven't chatted about uh, as well. So I, I really appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thank um, you. Hey, guys, uh, this is Aaron LeBauer and Greg Todd, and this is the Cash PT Lunch Hour podcast. Um, if you got any insight out of this, we'd love it if you just go share it on Instagram. Share it as an Instagram story. Uh, tag us both. Um, we'll reshare it or, you know, I will because Greg will be on the beach or something like that because uh, <laughs> he lives out in Florida. But we uh, really appreciate you spending the time with us today, um, and we'll see you on the next show. Take some time to plan your time to grow your business and improve your what, relationships and time, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.